It's almost like a very carnival atmosphere. It's like our equivalent to sort of Notting Hill or something like that. The front person can, can make signs. Sometimes you need to open a bottle, so you might have a, a court opener <laughs> and, and to pass them to the front. What's in my mind is like, what, what should I do next? <laughs> what should I do next? You sort of have to psych yourself up, and once the music starts going, you can't turn back now, so you've got to just kind of go with it. It's actually about, you know, making sure it looks right. So, as she said, I'm going to lead, and when I do this, we go. Because of the fierce nature of the line itself, it is often considered the rightful way to ward off evil spirits. Line dancing in Asia is often viewed as um, a form of celebration. It is also considered as a way of providing prosperity to the community. In the UK, it's considered more of a cultural activity by the local born Chinese people. For the well established uh, members of the Chinese society over here, it is a time to reminisce. And it is also considered an event to bring blessing to their families and their businesses, etc. etc. So I think it's a lot of Chinese people who are in the country, 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 who are 所以我哋就出師啊，所以咁樣就就俾成立咗呢個獅子一個 group。獅子係有時靠嗰啲音樂節奏啊嘛，靠啲音樂節奏去去即係帶領佢啊咁樣咯。嚇，練武師啊，有時一定要有啲功夫底啊，啊咁先可以誒扮得好睇啲啊，或者啊生猛啲啊咁樣咯。The audience actually sees in line dance. Do automatically do they think um, martial arts? Not necessarily, uh, but it, what they do remember, the, what they do think, what I believe, is, um, is is very much part of the heart and soul of the Chinese community and culture. Throughout history, hundreds of years ago, every martial art club will have a lion to represent the actual club itself. <laughs> They'll go out to perform during festive periods, um, just to greet other people, and it's a symbolic representative of the actual club itself. Back Mei Kung Fu, when you see it, and if you have a, a basic understanding of Chinese martial arts, it's a very pure and, and, and powerful system. So, in a way, everything is designed um, for max, maximum effectiveness. But even then, uh, there's something about it that, um, you know, there's no waste of energy, and there is, it is very to the point. So I just got hooked as soon as I saw it. This Kung 好耐好耐歷史嗰度，呢即係呢個白眉道人傳翻落嚟嘅，就一代傳一代咁傳傳到我哋即係我哋呢度嘅就係七代傳人，跟住下一代咧應該係留翻俾李家威佢哋啊教啦。It's very hard to try and 
but I would have imagined as an outsider to try and find a Lion Dance Club. Not many people actually exposed to it apart from what they say on TV on Chinese New Year, reported on the news. Um, I think most of the people that actually perform in our club, um, they got exposed to it, actually seen us practicing as a group. Um, they engaged, in, uh, sort of got their interest and basically they, they raise a lot of questions. What is this? Um, if you have not seen it before or um, those that have seen it cannot actually learn. I've been doing pac for seven years now. I did take one from the age of eight to 13 and um, I wanted to do something to do Chinese culture more than Korean and um, I decided to, to find a Kung Fu based uh, martial arts. At first I didn't really want to learn the Chinese line dance but then it was when, it was when, it was when I got into pac -Mai, it was about two three weeks into training I saw a lion dance or people practicing lion dance and doing the stuff that I couldn't do I was like, I want to do that. I want to. I want to be able to do that. I'm um, performing, but I don't think I'll be able to do it. And then about two months in, my sifu was just like, why don't you give it a go? Have a have a little play with it. And then and then I gave it a little go, and I started getting really into it. There's a lot of rules that you have to you have to follow, like um. There's certain rules that you have to follow to prevent having a fight with another lion. With martial arts schools, um, that are, there are, 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 are traditions that um, are designed, really, I think, to prevent the undermining of uh, fellow practitioners. You must be careful to observe protocol, um, show your respect to other schools, and not to undermine them. So, for example, when you pass another team, you would be very passive, you would tone down your music, you would not perform any extravagant moves because that might be considered intimidating. So there, there are these type of traditions that you have to observe when, when fellow martial artists um, are performing within the vicinity. I watched too many um, martial arts films <laughs> as, a, as a kid and I thought it was really, I thought, oh, that's really cool you, that you could um, fight and defend yourself and all those things. So that's really one of the reasons I, I, I took up martial arts. Um, and then from that, you know, the other part of martial arts then is uh, the, the lion dancing. Probably very much similar to Grace, really. Sort of grew up on martial arts films, um, kind of dabbled in. Um, karate and things like that, um, but in actual fact it was my brother who started attending Sifu's classes first and then he suggested I go along um, and give it a try. He was quite excited about the whole line dance thing and he was keen to get me involved as well. So yeah, I, uh, I went along to a couple of the, the lessons and then Sifu gave permission for me to, uh, <laughs> to join the line dance and start training with them. As I started to, to learn the lion dance, it, was, it wasn't just about the lion dance, it was about this culture behind it. Um, and then there's, sort of, there's, a, there's that team spirit as well, because it's not just you, it's, it's you and everybody else that's involved in the lion dance. And you've got to be aware of what everyone else is doing. The basic um, team members, it's composed of a, a troop, will be of the lion. Two person, the head and the tail. There will be the drummer, the gong player, and there will be the cymbal player. It requires a lot of teamwork, and there's no individual. So basically, they rely on each other. There's no one way that will lead the lion. Sometimes it will be the drummer that would lead the uh, lead the performance. Sometimes it will be the lion head that leads the performance. So depending on the type of event itself, physically, it's quite exhausting. It's more exhausting than people can actually perceive. Um, if being on the back or being on the head, they're both very demanding. So the back, you have to support the front person. So you have to 
make a lot of strength in your, in your legs and in your back so you can hold the, the, the front person. Most of the time you, you're bending forward and, and in most states also it's quite hot because you are under the light. <laughs> and you don't see a lot as well. Actually you don't see anything for that matter. You just go guided by the front person. Um, so that's also a weird sensation. So you're just there, you're doing your own thing, uh, you're following the front person but you don't know where you are. There's a lot of pressure in the drumming. If you do the drum wrong, like if, if you skip a beat by accident, then the light, it confuses everyone. It confuses the cymbals, because the cymbals are meant to be following the drum, and then the drum's meant to be following a lion. As the lion head, it's not just about you. It's, you've got to listen to what the drum's doing as well, because if it's out of sync, or if you realise it's not following you, then you've either got to um, pull back and wait, and then see what's going on. Um, or, you know, you, you've got to sort of adjust. It's the movements that the head makes which then transform it from just, oh, there's a person under the head, to being a creature that is moving in a way that looks like... Like lively and real. And real. So there's a lot of responsibility when it comes to doing the heads. Um, it's like the striker's role in a football match, I guess. You know, it's, it's where all the glory is in a lot of the times. What goes through my mind when I'm performing a lion head is that um, I have to do well. And I try to envision like how 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 an animal would look like approaching what we call a ten, which is a, a lettuce or cabbage. How you approach it before you eat it, and then the facial expressions. That's always going through my head, like the facial expressions of a of an animal, like a lion or a dog or something, like curiosity and all that. And then when I'm performing the tail. It's, it's all about following the guy's feet in front of you. So, um, so that's always going through my head. Especially with the lion head, you've also got to have a, a degree of awareness of what's going on around you as well. Um, just because of um, the type of performances you're expected to do and the spaces around you, the people, and then obviously the way that you um, sort of get the green. So if you're not spatially aware, <laughs> the likelihood you, you could end up sort of bumping into people and you know it kind of doesn't make it look quite so you know smooth and uh, slick um, and also you've also got to be aware of the, the person behind you as well so you don't end up kicking them in the face or, <laughs> or elbowing them and uh, etc etc. <laughs> At the beginning of each performance, you show your appreciation to the gods. And you solemnize that by inviting dignitaries to, for example, uh, dot the eyes of the lion. And uh, you use a ritual red ink. And through that, you establish contact, so to speak, with the spirits. It normally consists of either a Taoist or a, a Buddhist ceremony. Um, first, start by putting on the red ribbon, flowers, and uh, grapefruit leaves to the lion head itself, and it'll be uh, dotted by um, either a business person, or in the old days, it'd be either a minister, uh, someone so sort of high ranking in society, or well respected. You start off by uh, dotting the eyes from left to right, then the ears, nose, mouth a mirror and horn, and then the rest of the body. Once you've performed the eye dotting of the eyes, the lion would then be considered blessed. And throughout the performance, the lion would be bringing blessing to all around uh, and wherever it goes. I grew up in London and Chinatown and I remember when I was young and watching all the Chinese lion dance and dragon dance and I was completely in awe and excited every single time 
I remember whenever I saw it, it was just like, oh wow, I got to see the, see the, the dragon or the lion and it'd be like, oh, that must be so lucky. And uh, it's like, oh gosh, it's like all these Kung Fu people doing these dragon dances, like, oh, all the heroes. And, and then I'd go running back with my brother and sister and we'd try and mimic some of the moves as well. If I remember like as a kid, like a 10, I don't know, seven or eight, you'd be using the laundry basket, you know, with your brother to, to be, when it's Chinese to you, but I, I still remember that, you know, just using the laundry basket as a, uh, as a lion's head and you take turn. But I think as an adult, it was when it was introduced to me, I thought like, actually that's really, um, it's much more meaning, you know, because when you're a kid, you see somebody do it and you think this is what it is, but actually the techniques involved is actually much more, um, you know, much more refined and it, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not someone shaking and just doing, um, doing this, Ex exactly. <laughs> I don't know whether it was more it was so much superstition or whether it was custom, but um, I got the impression that sort of female lion dancers were, well, there wasn't, actually, as I grew up, I don't even remember if I ever saw any female lion dancers. It was all predominantly, if not all, male lion dancers. So maybe that added to the whole uh, prestige of joining the, 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 the lion dance team. Traditionally, many, many clubs would avoid female participation. Uh, we have never considered that an issue ourselves. We have always had uh, female team members, uh, proficient ones at that as well. And I think it really comes from the fact that in our tradition, we have the yin and the yang philosophy. Whereas yin is associated with female and yang is associated with male and yin is also associated with negativity and yang is of course positive so a lot of people then associate females with negativity and therefore uh, females should not participate in activities which are designed to bring positivity. <laughs> so that may be the background behind this, uh, but I personally do not subscribe to this. I'm not so much sure whether it, it applied to sort of um, the line dance itself, but I was aware that in sort of like spiritual arts, um, females, if they were on at a particular time of month, um, that may have sort of spiritual connotations in terms of perhaps uh, they're more open to sort of the spiritual realms, uh, realms um, sort of good and evil. And so I think initially I was a little bit uh, hesitant in that respect because I had that in mind when I was doing the line dance, when I started doing the head. It didn't matter so much when I was doing the, the symbols and uh, even the tail so much, but certainly the lion head where, you know, the, it had been fully blessed, you know, and I, at the time I believe that's where the sort of the, the deity would sit as you do the performance and sort of protected everybody. Um, I was a little bit self-conscious. Um, but then as time grew on, it's just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, nothing's happened. <laughs> it's crack on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess over time, I've not really thought too much about it and, um, Personally, I've not felt anything, you know, any difference in terms of the way I perform. Especially now, I think nowadays, I think it's, it's more of a surprise, a pleasant surprise for a lot of people to see a female lion dancer. Um, but yeah, I guess I think that may be the sort of new school of thinking, you know. There's normally two types of lion, the southern lion and the northern lion. The southern lions are normally associated with kung fu clubs, and northern lions are normally, uh, they have a big ball and normally you jump around, so it's, um, it's more acrobatic and normally performed for uh, hundreds of years ago for the um, 
for the emperors. The costumes are different and the movements are different. The music is slightly different as well. It was performed as a circus act in the past. Even today, if you um, attend Chinese circuses, you often see a northern dance, whereas the southern dance has always been associated with a ceremonial event. Traditionally, most Chinese people in this country are from the south. So they, they, they naturally favour the south, uh, south, southern version. But I have performed the northern dance in this country. And as sort of participant of both, I find them very much different. But of course, today, the fusion uh, makes it much, much more similar. Uh, actually brought the two together much, much more. We are students from Malaysia and we have this organisation called Imperial College Lion Dance Troupe where we practice lion dancing and we perform everywhere, mostly in London. When we perform Northern Lion Dance, it's kind of like you feel like very cheerful and happy environment and it's very harmonic. Everyone is just like laugh and all clap, everything. But for, for the um, Southern Lion Dance, I think it's more to like very impressive, like impress people by their all sorts of like their skills, like stunts. Like, um, they are, they are, I think their stunts are more, way more complicated, but um, they, they both have their own like difficulties. Our Northern Lion Dance in Imperial College London is actually assimilated. We actually uh, modified it just to meet the requirement like for performances. Ours is quite kind of different from those like traditional Northern Lion Dance because they have their own like long routine which actually they have a very like very big area and they have all sorts of like equipments for performance and uh, ours is more to like uh, more uh, simpler as in we have like play ball and we have slipping and we have showing scroll that part we still retain it in our routine but we actually modified it because we perform for the audience so we want to make them feel like oh this is really great <laughs> yeah we joined when we first came to imperial college which was last year october it's our first year this year so and when we join the Malaysian Society of Imperial College, then, then we know that there's this land dance and dance as part of Malaysian society. And we decided to join to experience the lion dance, which we, which we didn't back in Malaysia. Yeah. Back in Malaysia, we, when we see a lion dance performance, we, we had no idea that it, would, it actually takes so much effort, jumping and coordinating and everything because all the moves look, always look very seamless and very professional. So after having learned line dance, I've come to appreciate a lot more about line dance. I found the first few weeks of practice were quite, were quite uh, challenging for us. It was quite difficult. And we took a few weeks to learn to even stand on the back properly. Right? And we, I remember during the first two weeks itself, we are we are still trying to learn how to jump properly. So, yeah, it was not easy, but after many weeks of practices, then it becomes, it becomes much easier for us, yeah. Over the years, martial art clubs have produced capable people in performing various stunts and acrobats necessary for um, the performance of an exciting line dance. But you do not need to be a martial artist to perform the dance. You just need to um, equip yourself physically. Of course, you have a martial art background, that's a bonus for you. You can really learn it, uh, you can handle it like perfect, perfectly fine. But yeah, if you didn't have martial art background, I think it doesn't matter because as long as you train, you put, it, put your effort into learning line dance, yeah, I think you're on the right track. Two, three, four. 
five, six, seven, eight. In order to uh, perform well, you need like a really good strength and also like endurance. In Imperial College London, our line dance troupe, some of them don't have like martial background, so we introduce some intensive cardiovascular training and some martial arts training for them to strengthen their their legs, their core strength, and we just train them until they are good at those exercises. Then yeah, we proceed to training them like uh, other line dance moves, and yeah, they did quite well. It works. <laughs> When I first came, I couldn't do like more than five push-ups. <laughs> when we started, the training part was quite tiring because we've never had any martial arts background. But after constant training every week, we've improved a lot. We were quite shocked when they showed us how to do the stunts in the first few sessions, and we thought we would never be able to do it. But then, after like two or three months, we managed to. Uh, learn the moves and able to do it, so we feel like quite proud of ourselves after that. There were like many practices that we have to go through before we could be able to do the stunts. Through my years, I um, packed my learning line dance, and I'd say that it's evolved in a sense that there's more people doing competitions now. There's more people doing competitions on the high poles rather than sticking to the traditional on foot. In Malaysia, there's more demand for line dance performances, especially during Chinese New Year. We will be able to see like line dance performance in shopping malls, like just maybe right outside someone's house, yeah, things like that. And you even have competitions within the country and between and among a few countries like China and Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah and like Malaysia has managed to emerge one of the champions in one of the years for line dance yeah. competition. Yeah. So it's quite a popular um, culture in Malaysia. I think it's harder in countries like the UK or in Europe and that where um, you have the communities are, are more dispersed. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go to you know Chinese community in, in Southeast Asia, say Malaysia for example, um, and they have these competition, it spurs people to actually you know train and, and, and take it up. And so maybe there's more around it, whereas here I think it's maybe much more difficult. As people have more um, available to them, young people have more things available to them. There's nothing that necessarily mean I will stick to doing martial arts or Chinese line dancing um, because it is hard work and it's you know asking someone to train for hours and to, to, to do that. Um, they have to want to do it themselves and increasingly I think you know people, society just don't have don't have that sort of patience or you know that stamina or that that willingness to, to, to do that, and that's the reality, I think. Um, <laughs> 要教他们教他们
集冇啊咁啊，即係集到尾又 OK， 又中意咗，所以啊又中意舞師啊，跟住即係又同埋班師兄弟一齊玩埋一齊啦，咁又可以一路咁學學，一路學老咁學學到依家咁。其實都唔係話想做師傅，都係想學自己學到嘅咩嘢，就即係傳授俾下一代，等佢哋啊多啲中國人都係精職。啊，有功夫啊，嗰啲啊，咁樣啊嘛。如果即係唔教佢哋咧，即係好似損失咗自己咁辛苦學翻嚟啲嘢啊，唔教翻俾下一代。I don't think I knew much about line dancing prior to it, except maybe、um, going to Chinatown and actually seeing a performance during Chinese New Year, and then going home, you know, when you were a little kid, to then copy And, and do that, but I didn't understand why were certain things done. Why was there even a, a, a lion dance? And I don't think when I was a child, I even bothered to ask either. To me, it was more just a performance, and it was really exciting, but not actually、um, knowing more about it. And to to be very honest with you, I feel sometimes quite ignorant. And the very fact that with Sifu, I felt that I learnt so much more. Um, the cultural aspect and the reasons behind why why certain things were done and what the symbolism and, and such. So for me, I think that was as a child, I only saw it as a performance and the excitement of、um, this creature.、Um, so it's actually through Kung Fu and actually with Sifu that he takes the time to explain a lot of these things. And so I, to me, I think I find that a little bit more enriching. Growing up in Britain. It's, it is quite hard to learn about my、um, Chinese Chinese side because obviously I've I've loads of multicultural friends.、Um, I don't have many Chinese friends, and、um, Pagme has helped, and it it helps you learn a lot about your own culture. This generation and going forward, I think it's quite important to know your your roots and not bring、um, where your parents are from, where your ancestors were from,、um, and. Chinese martial arts and line dancing is just one of the ways to try and、um, learn and understand that, and, that's,、um, and I think that is very important. It all comes from interest first. When you have, when you have the interest, then basically everything will fall in place. I、um, only started actively participating in line dancing only in my late teens. I had less interest when I was younger, but、um, it just grew with me as I, you know, appreciated my martial arts. So gradually, over time, it just grew on me, and、um, I just felt、um, it was representative of the club itself. So I think I have an important role of of、uh, being the son of、uh, of Jamie Lee to actually、um, represent the club、uh, and, and perform. In Asia, you have predominantly. Oriental communities、uh, who value the line dance、um, rituals. In Britain, Oriental communities are in the minority, and it's therefore not as widespread. But、um, as the local Oriental communities grow, we are increasingly seeing local Oriental schools developing their own teams. And in that way, it's becoming far more popular than than previously. Lok Chi Fu Martial Arts Association was started by the son of Lok Chi Fu in the mid 70s. The origins of the club、uh, date back to 1931. When Lok Chi Fu himself、uh, started the club in、uh, Guangdong in China, he moved to Hong Kong after the war, or when the war started, and he started his club in Hong Kong, and it's been ongoing ever since. Lok Chi Fu himself was invited to participate in the Commonwealth Institute Games, and he brought the team over, and by the request of the local Chinese community. Uh, he formed a club in Chinatown, in London, and his son stayed behind to manage the club. And that's when I joined the club. A 
lot of students join for the martial arts side and they start without any particular interest in the line dance. But I make it an objective to include them and to, to actually encourage them to participate to, so as to learn the history and culture behind um, what we are about, really. When I started with uh, my Sifu at Luke Chifu, Toby Wong, uh, that's basically the first time I got introduced to lion dance. Uh, before that, actually, lion dance, I've, I've seen it probably in kung fu movies, uh, and I always actually used to think that it was just done because of the movie aspect for entertainment purposes. I didn't really realize that it had a, a, a real kind of link to the martial arts skills until I joined uh, Luke Chifu, because every other Kung Fu place I've been to didn't have a line dance. Uh, so you, I never associated line dance with martial arts clubs. I've been doing martial arts since I was probably about 14, 15 years old, and I've tried loads of different martial arts, loads of different sort of masters. Uh, so I'm, I'm constantly was kind of looking for, I guess, authentic uh, Kung Fu or good martial arts. I've been with my Sifu for more than 10 years now and really enjoyed learning and taking on the kind of the cultural aspects as well as the martial arts and line dancing. I've never done anything, I guess, on the creative side in terms of in school or, or dance or music. So in terms of my dancing and my music is, is probably non-existent. So hence, I'm not very good at it to begin with. So I guess it, in a way, it sort of it exposed me to try something that I would have never tried. My body was sort of in a little bit of a shock to begin with. But I think as I did it more and more, it, it sort of started to become very comfortable. And I think the more you start to try to relate it to Kung Fu stances, you then start getting yourself more comfortable in, in terms of how you kind of position yourself. So, I mean, I, I initially it was just the Kung Fu, which is what I was focusing on. But I guess once I started to do it, I started to, I guess, see the other side of the martial arts. And I think it also exposed me more to the cultural side of uh, the Chinese culture, I, I guess, going away because you start learning about the, the sort of spiritual side and you start learning about why it's important, why it's used. I'm not a specialist on lion dance at all. My interest was, and still is to a great extent, um, knowing the system. Um, but I'm more and more interested as time goes by. When I started in, in, in the late 90s doing Chinese martial arts, um, I, I didn't know about um, lion dance. I haven't seen it before, really. So in Portugal, and you have, you have a, a fairly small Chinese uh, community, in, mainly in Lisbon and Porto, in the, in the main cities. Um, and you know, there isn't, um, you know, like dragon dancing or lion dancing. You, you tend not to see that. Um, so when I started practicing, I saw them, you know, playing with lions. Well, what is this? You know, so, well, this is lion dancing, you know, and then they start to explain maybe what it is and so on. So that, that was my first point of contact with, with lion dancing. So I never heard about it before practicing Chinese martial arts. The way I see it, this is my experience, whether this is right, wrong, I don't know, is that you have the, as the back column, you have the, the system, the Chinese martial arts system, and um, around it you have all you know, all the Chinese culture, if you want, where, you know, I, th I think the lion dancing is, is, is part of it. So it's always something that was always on the side. So I, I was never very interested on it when I started. But as you go along, you start to be influenced by it, you know. Um, so that's, that's how slowly I started practicing the lion dance. Slowly, yeah. <laughs> After we perform, like people will be crowding us, wanting wanting to take picture with us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that joy that makes us uh, satisfied every time we perform. I think some of the uh, our most enjoyable performances are usually in front of kids in schools, because you get that kind of appreciated reaction from the kids who who just enjoy the performance for you know what they see, and they may not understand what's going on.
I still, you know, really enjoy watching it, even though I, I now know so much more about what's going behind it. I, it's, to me, it still hasn't lost that kind of magic for me. When I reach 60, that's probably when I'm going to stop, because uh, I'm getting old then, won't I be? But um, hopefully, I can have my own pac -Man class. Alongside with that, I'll be teaching lion dancing as well. It gives everybody a good insight as to where the, the history of, of the Kung Fu has come from. So it's a bit like the, the, the lion dance, to me I see it as it's something that has to be preserved and has to be part of, 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 the, of the whole kind of learning experience. I think it's quite incredible that it's been, I think, maybe a few hundred years and we still have we still have this kind of culture like Chinese lion dance around. Our vision, our Imperial College Lion Dance Troop vision is to pass this culture generation by generation and we want everyone to know about lion dance and the existence of Northern Lion Dance as well. And also make like people to appreciate it more so that it can continue on and survive for a few thousand years more. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs>